My dad is from Ville Platte, Louisiana, which is a small Cajun town in the central part of the state. And my mom is from New Orleans, so some of my friends call me a, a Cajun hybrid. <laughs> Catching a few? The French, they came down from Nova Scotia, from Acadie, and the English are notorious in history for kicking the French out of Acadie. The majority of them settled in South Louisiana, and so that's where the origins of the Cajun people came from. I caught catfish bodies before. So much of what we like to do in Louisiana is to go out into the swamps, the marshes, and either fish or hunt or bird watch. My dad was a fisheries biologist for the states. When I found out I could get a degree in fisheries, well, that's what I want to do. And so for about the last eight years, I've been the head of the Department of Biological Sciences here at Nickel State. Very fortunate to have that, that job. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, oh, that one. Look at that, a little yellow bass. <laughs> so again, these little cuts here aren't too bad of a place to fish. <laughs> we have a rich diversity out here. If you, if you take a ride on the bayou, you almost always are going to see something. Whether it's a fish jumping, a fish splashing, or a bird, you know, an alligator, or a turtle, there's, there's so much life down here. We do see the effects of climate change. The land is not as elevated today as it was several years ago. So we have almost like a double whammy. We're losing elevation of our land and the sea level is rising. And so those two factors together are really accelerating coastal land loss in Louisiana. Land loss will affect Cajun culture. We know that. Cajun men cook, and what's funny is every man down here who's a cook, he will tell you that he learned from his mother, <laughs> you know, so the Cajun women around there can cook too. The origins, of course, it was the French settlers that came here first, and so a lot of French style Cajun is very rustic. We grow a lot of rice in Louisiana, so rice is a big mainstay. You know, we always think about having the, the meat. I get just as excited about the vegetables that we cook, so I use canned corn because I don't grow my own corn. All right, watch this. Watch this. It's called a corn mock chew. And usually the way we do it is we smother down corn with onions and peppers and garlic and stuff and some kind of a smoked meat, whether smoked sausage or smoked tasso. I was so fortunate. Our family, we've had some camps, and the purpose to go to the camp is to go hunting, to go fishing, or just to go cook and relax with friends. We sit around, we cook on these types of stoves. Everybody I know, they have a stove like this. It's just a propane stove, two burners. Kind of like background music, it's nothing. Yeah. A lot of the meals take a long time to cook, so it's not like there's one person in the kitchen cooking while everybody sits in the living room. It's everybody's in the kitchen. And so while we're cooking, we're in the kitchen, we're stirring the pot, we're also socializing. We're talking to each other. So things are a little hectic when we first start cooking, when you're browning and you're doing the onions. It's kind of hard to keep in control of everything. But once you get everything back in the pot and it's all set, we got a special setting on our stove, and it's called drink. And so you get the stove set, everything in the pot, you turn it down nice low and go sit down and fix a drink and relax. And so we'll be there soon enough. And we'll play some music then. The traditional Cajun music is what the, our Cajun ancestors played starting back in you know, the 1700s, 1800s. The fiddle and the guitar came about and they would play in dance halls, they would play at each other's house. You know, there was no internet, no TV, and so what do you do? Well, you sit around and play music and, and have a dance on Saturday nights. Traditional Cajun music is, is almost always sung in French. Almost every song, the lyrics are about someone's girl leaving him or someone dying or, 
or he's in prison and he misses his mama, or he's drinking too much, or he's hung over, and that's, that's what the songs are about. You can find Cajun music out there, but in the region where we live, we saw a decline in the music. So we formed the Cajun Music Preservation Society, me and a few friends. We host open Cajun jams so people can learn the music. Um, young people can learn the old songs. And the community has embraced us tremendously. Yeah. Woo. That was good. That's awesome. When I see water come up like that, because of a very small storm that's very far away in the Gulf of Mexico, it makes me nervous. Fifteen years ago, that storm would not have put that much water in the parking lot at the boat ramps. All right, you might as well fill the bucket, right? One of the things that we do <laughs> with our graduate program is small-scale restoration work. We bring our students to the coast every fall, and we collect the mangrove seeds. So we can get them here. Any way you can go around, I think you, know, you, can, you can access them that way. And this one's pretty good. And we bring those seeds back to campus and we grow them out for a year and then we bring those out the following year. And we plant those and we collect some more seeds. Now, so these are some mangroves that we planted last year and these little, we call them these, these deep pots. So we can bring out these mangroves, this tray right here that has 50 plants in there. Bring it out to the beach or the barrier, I don't know where we want to plant them and pop them out, stick them in the ground. Works out really easy. It's scary. When we look at the land loss projection maps going up for the next 50 years, they always do a scenario of no actions taken. But if we do some types of restoration, we won't lose as much land. So much of Cajun culture in the Bayou region is the livelihood. Our shrimpers our crabbers, our oystermen, they're the ones who are going to be impacted by the, the coastal changes. Some people say that, well, we've lost almost everything there is to lose. I disagree. I think that there's a lot left to lose for us, and we need to stay strong, and we need to continue to use the best engineering that we can to rebuild and restore our coastal wetlands.